Welcome back to Stock Tricks with Nick for this week's breakout watch list. In this video, I'll be covering 16 different stocks that have breakout potential in this week for January 11th to the 15th. All of these stocks are in strong uptrends. They're 200 day, they're above their 200 day simple moving average, which itself isn't an uptrend. They're 150% or more off their 52 week low. Uh, and there's little to no overhead above. So we're always trying to find the strongest stocks that have pulled back and consolidated a little bit and are setting up for another breakout. None of these stocks are already broken out of a certain trading channel. We're trying to identify them just before they start moving. So you can see last week's winners, we found VERI up 30%, KRA, I traded that one personally, up 20.9%, and THC also traded that up 15.2%, and that's just in the one week. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I do these breakout watch lists on Sunday morning, on either Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on how the week is going. Uh, I'll do a live stream to kind of refresh this list, put a new breakout watch list up for the second half of the week, um, and then go through all the stocks that you guys want to see uh, in the live stream. So those are at 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time. You guys can jump on, uh, send me stocks that you want to check out, and we'll go through as many charts as you want. And then on Friday, I do a trading recap going through how each of the breakout watch list and the midweek movers live stream watch list performs, how I personally performed, um, and a look back at the TikTok trading challenge, which I'll get to in a second. But uh, please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy stock trading content. Leave a like on the video if you uh, got anything out of it, and follow me on Stock Twits, TikTok, and Twitter. Uh, so I want to make sure you, you are voting on your favorite from this list. Um, so each week I post this breakout watch list video, and then I'll follow it up with a tweet, uh, a Twitter poll for four of those stocks that you guys can choose from that, that you think is uh, the best setup going into next week. Whatever the distribution of votes is uh, before the market opens on Monday, I'll take the money in my Robinhood account that I keep funding uh, each week with, tick, with uh, money that I make on TikTok. Um, and then I trade those four stocks with the same distribution of the vote. So market opens on Monday, put in those market orders, uh, 10 minutes before the close on Friday, I'll sell those. Uh, and then at the end of the year, if that TikTok trading account, the Robinhood account beats my own trading account on a weekly compounding basis, I give all of that money away. So uh, more information on that is in the link in the description. So make sure you uh, vote on your favorite setup. Quick disclaimer, Anything that I talk about today is ed for educational purposes only. None of this is financial advice. Please do your own due diligence. Trading comes with financial risk. With that said, here's the stock lineup for the day. We got these 16 stocks. Now, I do uh, want to put a word of caution out. Last week when I was making a list, uh, my first go around, I had 50 stocks, and then I narrowed it down to 16. This week, I, I only found about 20, 22 that were really setting up. So uh, might be a week to not press too hard on uh, on your trading and just let some of the, your winning setups from last week play out. But uh, still found 16 quality setups that we'll be going over today. Uh, the star on TGTX is just because I personally own that stock already. Um, all right, let's jump to the chart and get into it. So first we have AGYS. Uh, this is a thinly traded name. Uh, just to call out, uh, on Friday, they only had 84,000 shares traded. Uh, but you could see a pretty strong move through here, about 80% or so from uh, the last consolidation period broke out. Now, it did have this higher volume pullback, which is a strike against the chart. Doesn't mean we, we can't trade the stock, but um, we're always trying to look for the best setups. And that's just one strike against it. But that, that shows that a little bit more um, more people are leaving the stock than you would like to see at those higher prices. But since then, it uh, found some support at the 20 day, bounced up, had another pullback, but this pullback happened on very, very light volume. And one thing that I liked is it undercut the previous lows through here. So anyone who put their stop losses right at that price got stopped out. So the only people left in this name are just the strong holders or uh, people that got in on this turn. So that's what you like to see. You saw a lot of volume come in on the sixth as it moved over that um, kind of pullback low or pullback high. And now it's set up. We had two days where the, the high was right around the same price, 4044. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was 4044. So 
Going into next week, a break over 40, 44 would be your possible buy point. Very little volume on the inside candle on Friday. You like to see that. And a break over that would, would basically put us um, right near all-time highs. So very little uh, upper, <clears throat> upper resistance. It's AGYS, but again, it is a thinly traded name. So uh, take that into account. Next, we have BLNK, Blink Charging. This has been a monster move. What is it up? 450% uh, just since November or so. Had the strong breakout and pulled back to the eight day. Had another rally, pulled back again, and then got going. Um, so this would have been really nice and viable. I bought FSL, but uh, should have probably bought Blink instead. But since then, um, got out on big volume. Pulled back on a little bit heavier volume, but uh, after a, what kind of move is that? After 100% move uh, and coming off of another 100% or so, 200% move, uh, it looks like some people were taking profits through there. Had a first kind of pullback, then some consolidation days, and then another one that undercut that first pullback day, which is nice. Again, shaking out all the stops there. Uh, rallied up a little bit and had a lower low, lower high day on Friday with a little bit more volume, but looks like a uh, buyer stepped in right around that eight day exponential moving average. So this is one where I, I put it on the watch list for this week, but ideally we get another week's action of just kind of sideways or even down, um, de downward movement just to give the uh, short term traders a reason to sell, to, to shake them out, um, to take some profits on, on this move up. But if it goes, uh, we're looking at a high of 47.67 from the 7th um, as a possible buy point right through there. But again, if this can pull back and, and kind of just trade sideways for a week, build up that, that buying pressure, that would be ideal. That's BLNK. Next, we have CRSR. This was an IPO high tight flag through here that uh, I got in and shaken out a couple times with these long lower wicks, but then... Uh, the trade did finally work out, sold some into strength. That was up, what was it, 70% or so. Um, from there, we had the first pullback of 36%. And then the second main one here to the 50-day simple moving average of 23%. And, and now it's starting to get uh, nice and tight. And another thing that I wanted to point out, on the extension, it was lower volume on the way up, heavier volume on the way back. Uh, which again is a strike against the chart, but um, after that pullback, it has stayed in the same relative range. And then what I'm noticing now is on this uh, on this last kind of rally was the first time where the buying volume overshadowed, overshadowed the the pullback volume we had on Friday. Now maybe on Monday we have more pullbacks on heavier volume. Who knows? But that's why we're not buying. Um, we're not just randomly buying the stock. We're waiting for it to break out and have some momentum higher before we're we're buying. So uh, that's the first thing that I noticed. It's starting to get tight. Maybe it does take another week to set up better, uh, kind of downward action before this high breaks. Um, that would, again, that would be ideal. I, I I would rather all the the stocks get very very uh, tight in a, a price channel before uh, we can get some size on it, but. Uh, this has 80% move earlier, so it does have the power to get going. Um, so I'll be watching Friday's high of 4041 as a possible buy point there. CRSR. Next we have EGHT, and this was on the Wednesday breakout or the Wednesday market movers live stream that I talked about. Um, high tight flag setup. Let's see what was it up. Up about 130% in um, since November, and then the pullback here was for only 14%. So really shallow pullback after 130% move. Not many people trying to get out. Uh, a little bit more selling volume than you would like. But on the second day, it gapped down to that 20-day simple moving average. That's the screen line, and then it rallied back up. So a lot of that volume was actually in the rally coming higher. Since then, it had a inside day. And then Thursday was higher highs, higher lows. Friday, higher highs, higher lows, volume picking up. And now we're, we're right at 
kind of all time highs. Uh, so a break over 3572, the high from the 24th would be viable. Um, th this has now extended 15% in four days. So if we can check back and then break through maybe like Tuesday, Wednesday, that's great. If we go through on Monday, uh, this high uh, 3572 is viable. It's EGHT. Next we have FRHC. Very, very strong name. You got the 200, the 50, the 20, and the eight day exponential all in the right order. Um, you do have good volume on the way up. A couple high volume pullback right here, but uh, wasn't that much actual action, only 12% down. So not, not too bad there. Since then, uh, very tight pullback through here with a long lower wick on the fourth, which again, you like to see because anyone putting their stops through here got shaken out on that move. Uh, and kind of on Friday too, on Friday's lower wick, we undercut all the all the lows since the previous wick. Um, so, so now I would be looking at a break over 5184, the high from the sixth as a possible buy point. And let's see what kind of risk that is. And if you put your stop at the previous low here, that's only 5% risk. So uh, I always put stops uh, within 7% of my entry just to keep my losses as small as possible and then uh, let the winners run. But that was e no FRHC. Next we have GOGO, GoGo. -Go. And this is one where I'm hoping to catch everyone off guard uh, because this is one that all the breakout traders were, were looking for. Had a 240% move up here. And then it consolidated nicely, kind of flagged out, very little volume, popped. And then after this, it's been very tough to trade. So it, it popped, undercut the lows, rallied, undercut the first kind of major pullback here. Let me draw that out better. So anyone in on this low got shaken out there, rallied again, and now things have gotten really, really quiet. We have moved over uh, the high from, let's see, what day is this? The 24th there. Uh, so now we're making higher highs, hopefully higher lows in the base after many, many shakeout opportunities here. Um, let me jump to the weekly chart to show you how that looks too. So on the weekly, the 20. Simple uh, moving average right there, sitting right on it. Uh, volume, good on the way out, good on the way out. All the pullback weeks are on less volume than their, uh, than the buying weeks. So that's good to check out. So again, this is one where everyone was talking about this earlier. A lot of breakout traders were trading it. And now I haven't heard anything on it. And it, it is starting uh, to get going. If we can break over the high from January 6th, 1066, uh, that's my possible buy point there. And then if it does break out over that, we're also over this volume shelf right here. So uh, less resistance up top at that at that level. So that's GOGO. -Geo. Next we have JMIA. This is one that I traded with uh, kind of this breakout over 141. No, not 141, just 41. 41 there, so bought on that day got out, I sold some of the strength, got stopped out the rest at my entry. So uh, no risk after it got moving. Since then, uh, pulled back and similar to uh, the CRSR, we did finally have a shift of volume. So now on Thursdays, up day had more volume than either Wednesdays and Fridays pullback days. Um, so it shows some buying interest. Also wanted to point out that twice it kind of reached that 20 day simple moving average, moved over it slightly, and then got rejected and sold off. So there are sellers coming in at the 20 day simple moving average right now. So on the flip side, if we can break that and close over that, then that uh, that resistance becomes support typically. So I'm looking for a break over $40. Uh, that's the high from Friday. Uh, I, because we closed lower on Friday, maybe it needs a couple of days to get going and then break out, but uh, definitely looking for a break over 40. This has very powerful name. Um, let's see, it's up around 500% since October before the pullback. So uh, definitely one to watch. And this is one that you guys can vote on later.
And, th- and that poll is going to be on Twitter this week. I had it on YouTube last week, but we didn't have as much engagement as I wanted. So uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter, Sock Tricks with Nick. Next, we have LAZR. This was on the breakout watch list last week, uh, but I said I, I hoped that we had a pullback and, and to set it up better, and that's exactly what we got. Uh, really look at the volume here. Tons of volume on the way out, little volume on the way back, even though it's a pretty pretty hard pullback. Um, then volume on the way out, little volume on the way back, volume on the way out, little volume on the way back. So more buyers than sellers each time. Likely it's more short-term or medium-term duration traders that are, are selling this off. And because each each kind of rally is less and the next pullback is less, as the, that range tightens, it gives less of a reason for, um, for for the people to sell. So that's why you're seeing less and less volume on the sell side. So Friday did look like it was going to get going, and then it squatted. Uh, I'll be looking for a break over Friday's high, 35.25 as a possible buy point. Uh, it coincides with the high from the fourth as well. So let me just kind of draw that. It's not perfect, but uh, also if we can get through that area, there's a little bit more on that price range. Um, but you, I guess you could wait till the high of 36.22, the high from uh, December 30th as a possible buy point. That would get you over this volume shelf. But LAZR. Now we are halfway through. We got eight more for you guys. Next, we have MITK. Uh, this one's not quite a high tight flag. It was 80, 77% up. So high tight flags, 90% or more in eight weeks or less, and then a pullback within 25% from the highs. This one, a little bit less, but still kind of has that look to it. Uh, tons of volume on the way out. Very uh, little volume on the pullbacks, even though they are some large red candle days, which that's something we got to be cautious about. One strike against the stock, but uh, the 20 day simple moving average is holding really well for support. We have not closed under that uh, this entire time. So uh, a break over Friday's high of 16, no, uh, 1699, called $17 uh, is your, your possible buy point there. Little volume on the way back and average true range ATR. Uh, measuring the length of those those bars are starting to come in. So there's more price agreeing. Uh, and, and when people agree on price, usually volume starts to drop because uh, less and less people think there's an edge in either shorting or, or buying the stock. So when that price illiquidity comes, or the, the volume illiquidity comes, once a big buyer steps in, that can shoot the price up. Similar, Similarly, if a big seller comes in, that'll shoot the price down. So that's why we're buying only when the stock breaks out and we're always using stops because if this does get going and then a big seller steps in and there's still that price illiquidity, I want to get out with minimal downside risk. So always five to 7% um, less if I can get it on my stop losses. That's MITK. Next we have OCUL. I'm not sure if we talked about this one on Wednesday, but you got the 200, the 50, and the 20 and the 8 are right around the same price now. Uh, the 8 is now back up into an uptrend. Good uh, steady volume on the way up. You do have uh, two large sell days. This 18th is the quadruple witching day, so you kind of have to ignore the volume on that day. But uh, definitely one strike against the chart is this long red candle. Um, which could have signaled a blow off top. You had that one gap, another gap, highest volume. So after that stock pulls back, undercuts that first pullback low through here. So you'd like to see that everyone got knocked out that were quickly moving their stops up. And now you have a couple uh, couple highs, not exactly that, but you get the point. The high from the 28th, the 7th and the 8th, all around the same price. So I'll, and then on Friday, we had an inside day. Um, so a break over Thursday's high of 22.30 would be your possible buy point. It's OCUL. Next, we have Penn National Gaming. Um, this one, let me just hide all that. There's tons of trade history there. Been trading this one a lot. Uh, strong breakout on heavy volume. No volume on that last pullback. So the pullback, let's see, what was that? 20%? Yeah, 19% pullback. 
no one was getting out, even even with a 20% pullback. It wasn't just a 5% that would get short-term traders out. 20% pullback, no one was budging. That's a great sign. Um, then we got a big uh, volume move up here. I think that came with the New York gambling law. Uh, squatted on Thursday, higher highs, higher lows on Friday, but uh, right at kind of that pivot high point. So 94.49. 94.75, right around that same price. Uh, good volume on both those up days. A break over Friday's high of 94.75 is my possible buy point. That's Penn National Gaming. Next, we have Snapchat. This is one that we talked about on Wednesday. Uh, it was a high type flag that I traded through here, then started pulling back. Uh, had a, a great shakeout day on the 20, 28th here. Um, then rally back up on the 29th, tons of volume on there, pulled back again, uh, didn't quite undercut the low on this day. That would have been amazing to see. Um, but we did get kind of a push up to the 20 day simple moving average. And then that squatted. So people were selling the 20, uh, and then on Thursday, clean break through that. And then an inside day on Friday sets this trade up very nicely. You got four daily highs. All around the same price, um, the 23rd, 29th, 7th, and 8th. So a break over uh, 53.82 Thursday's high would be your possible buy point. That's Snapchat. Uh, TGTX. This was on last week's watch list. This was on Wednesday's breakout watch list. Um, this is my largest position right now. Uh, high type flag. Let's see here. Up a hundred ten percent, hundred eleven percent, whatever it is, close enough. Uh, pullback of only twelve percent, so really, really tight pullback. No volume on that that pullback action. Tons of volume on the way out. That's a great sign. Um, railing off the lows, good volume on there. So now, um, if you didn't get in a little bit lower, like we said last week, you could still get in with just a pure break over the previous high of fifty six eleven. Maybe this does kind of pull back, allow the 20-day simple moving average to catch up to it before another big buyer steps in, but uh, this looks pretty quality setup. It's TGTX. Next, we have TRUP. This is a slower mover name, but very, very strong uptrend here. Not much is shaking it. 250.28. Uh, last couple days, you had uh, a pullback, but really not much. I think it was like a 10% pullback. Yeah, 10% pullback uh, just to the 20-day simple moving average, which has been trailing behind um, pretty tightly. Uh, sh another pullback on Friday, touched the low of the day, touched the 20-day, and then um, moved a little bit off that. Maybe we do need a day that undercuts this low. I guess you got two daily lows right through there. So if, if we can get a day, say Monday, pulls down and has a, a nice long lower wick that shakes out all the lows through here. Uh, and then it kind of rallies back up. That would be ideal, shaking everyone out. Um, otherwise, you have uh, that's a terrible drawing. You have a couple daily highs through here that you could be better buyable. So I would just say a break over 122.36. Uh, Friday's high is your possible buy point. Don't love the, the larger volume on the red candle there. Um, one strike against it, but uh, definitely one to watch. Next, we have TTCF. This is a an IPO high tight flag. So it, I think this was one of the. Yeah, I forget exactly the story behind this, but uh, nice move up here. Uh, Eighty nine percent, ninety percent, whatever. Close enough for a high tight flag. Um, and then a pullback of 17% and tons of volume on the way out. Very little volume coming back in. Uh, did have this squat day, so it looked like it was breaking out of what would have been like this flag, right? Through there. Uh, but that squatted, sold off, and closed red on the day. So now that high becomes our possible buy point. If it can break through that and sellers don't step in right around that same price, then uh, Chances are it's going to get going again. So that's 24.83. That's the price that I'm looking for. Uh, I also want to see the volume kind of switch. So I want to see heavier volume on the way out, 
less volume on the way back on some of these daily candles. That's TTCF. And last but not least, VERU. We had this on the breakout watch list last week. Uh, had that nice pullback undercutting all the lows that we were looking for. Um, right through there. So undercut that on the 4th. Hit the 20-day simple moving average. Big buyer stepped in. You see all that buying volume. Rallied it back up. Then just flagged out through here uh, on very, very light volume. So I'm just looking for a break over Friday's high, 987, as a possible buy point there. But what kind of move is this? 280, 275% move up. Uh, and then I think it was about 30% back. Yeah, 30, 32% back. So maybe it does need another week to, to pull down, catch up to the 20 day again, and then get going. But uh, if we break over Friday's high, that, that would be uh, an interesting area to watch. All right, so that is the breakout watch list for the week. Make sure you uh, go on my Twitter, Stock Tricks with Nick, Stock Trick Nick, sorry, Stock Trick Nick on Twitter, and vote on your favorite setup. And however that gets distributed, I'll be uh, investing the TikTok Trading Challenge Fund uh, that same way. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, Stock Tricks with Nick. I will see you on Wednesday for the Midweek Movers live stream. Hope you guys have a great week.